first want to tell you about our next program, which uh, will not be on the second Sunday of April, because that is Easter. It will be April 15th, the third Sunday, and it's going to be a four-hand piano program with uh, Dwight Orr and with me, assuming that I learn my music in the five weeks that we have. Uh, so I hope you will be there. We're doing works by Schubert and Vigo and um, Johann Strauss and some other things. So, and we're also going to have uh, two pianos here, so uh, we've been able to rent a second instrument for that. Um, I'm very, um, I'm always pleased when I'm able to introduce to you someone who also serves on uh, the board of the Sarasota Music Archive, who is still active as a, a performer. Many of you uh, know uh, Ken um, in uh, so many uh, 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 situations in uh, in uh, the local area, and uh, I would like to just um, tell you a little bit about uh, Ken Sardman and uh, Leah. Uh, Ken has lived here for 16 years. He's been very active in all kinds of uh, jazz performance in the area. Prior to that, in the Chicago area, he worked with such artists as uh, Tony Bennett and uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, was uh, occasionally uh, playing with the Chicago Symphony, has played at Carnegie Hall, and uh, a, a variety of other situations. Uh, Leah has performed with the uh, uh, Florida Orchestra in uh, St. Petersburg. She's worked with uh, such organizations as uh, Guy Lombardo and uh, Lawrence Welk Show. She's um, been also very active in the local area as um, a vocalist. So it is my pleasure to present to you Leah and Ken. Thank you very much, John. <clears throat> and thank you, Jim. And thank all of you for coming. See, on a nice, beautiful day like this, you're inside. I mean, it's a real honor. I should tell you a little bit about what we're going to do here. Uh, we've learned that no longer can you go out and just play the saxophone and sing. Uh, now you have to have an act. <laughs> well, we, what we want to do, we want to travel. And uh, Leah's had some tragedies in her family, and we uh, decided that the, what helps her a lot uh, is the music and travel, both of them. So we're going to be doing... Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> And I'd like you to meet our band. Um, there's Maury and Lou and Jim and Bill. And, and one good thing about this is if the drums get too loud, we take care of that. And the one who takes care of that, this is the leader. And he controls the band. That is, this one gets this one right. So a lot of this is kind of new. We had a show that we would work on for several weeks. And several we, weeks, I'd say several months. Was it several months? Well, Every it, day I had a practicing. Well, something he doesn't thrill to do. <laughs> well, I think I'm too old to practice. If I don't, if I haven't learned it by now, it's too late. It's, too late. <laughs> it's not the music so much; it's the lines, it's the pattern between the Yeah, we have songs. to do that kind of stuff now. So, so um, oh, is it yours? Well, I was just going to say it's been totally rewritten as of a couple days ago. But we aren't so the you, written part yet. This is just you're making that up, right? Not really. You got the next line. Go ahead, honey. So anyway, so you're the guinea pigs, if you don't mind. Um, we're going to have a, we're going to do our little show, which is now called the Courts the Courtship in Song, and it's sort of a story of our romance. Well, it begins with through the magic of music and lyrics. Kenny and I are going to weave our story for all of you of our Roman romance. I first laid eyes on her in a smoke-filled jazz club in Greenwich Village. Uh, yeah, it threw me off. I was really, I was really doing so well. I was trying to make it look as though I wasn't looking at the work. Did you notice that? Very good. I first laid eyes on her in a smoke-filled jazz room in Greenwich Village. I remember that. She was the headliner, and soon I became her favorite sax player. Ooh. 
love for sale. Never tells in young love for sale. Love that's fresh and still unspoiled. Love that's only slightly soiled. Love for sale. Tell me who. I aim a 
was wrapped up in clover. That I could speak to a dream
Before. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. For a lady putting on a bow tie? <laughs> when I was 16 years old, my father, well, my father and mother were both born in Sweden. Somebody asked me how to pronounce the name. And I said it's Soderblom, but in Swedish it's Soderblom, or something like that. Anybody here Swedish can, can correct me. Yep. Is that okay? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> so I had my first job, and I had to, I had to wear a tuxedo. And I had a bow tie, and my father said to me, if you're going to wear a bow tie, you're going to learn how to tie it. So I've been tying my own bow tie since I was 16, but I had a terrible time with hers. Because doing it backwards is hard. <laughs> I did a show with Richard Harris. Remember when he had the, uh, what was that big record? Arthur Park, one of those big records he had. Well, I did a tour with him. I had the orchestra. Which, I mean, if you, if you can imagine how much fun it was to be working with him. And I had to play a couple of oboe parts. And I had just learned the oboe. And I didn't, I mean, you don't just learn the oboe. I learned the fingering, and I could get a pretty decent tone, but that was it. And, uh, but as is always the case, that's why oboe players are, are probably all nuts. Because, well, the light goes on the oboe player, and he's got to come in cold, and he's been sucking on his reed for a half an hour to make sure it's going to work. <laughs> Any of you uh, classical musicians know all about that. Anyway. So we're ready to go, and I'm sucking on the reed, waiting for my, my first note, and I hear this voice from the bowels of backstage. Kenny, come back here. I can't tie this damn tie. <laughs> so I had to go, and, and then he said, don't get too close, because I had to stand behind him to do it, and you know the reputation he had. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's the end of that. That was very good. Well, it was true, though. I don't tell jokes. I just tell true stories. You've had enough of them. Well, Quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we? Okay. <laughs> okay. We take off the scarf, have the grab the hat. Okay. And, and I get to say I love you, honey. And I love you too. And I'm gonna Why don't you take your jacket over your tie over to get comfortable? Well, all right. I think it's a comfortable kind of tune. It is. Well, it's a comfortable audience too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, we'll skip that one, right? Every honeybee fills with jealousy when they see you now. I don't blame the goodness knows how they suffer rose. But when you pass by, the flowers from the side tell the reason why you're the way the goodness knows how they suffer rose. Don't touch sugar, you just have to touch my cup. You're my sugar. It's sweet when you stir it. Well, I'm taking sips from your tasty lips. Seems I'm in your fairy drips. You're good that you go in the lips. I'm in
Oh, yeah. 
Mediterranean cruise. The water was just like glass, especially the seven-day crossing home. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it great? But I have to tell you, on the way home, when we sailed into New York Harbor and sailed past Lady Liberty, there's nothing like the thrill of being in the Seattle again. That's true. Great to be from New York. How many hands? All right. Look, Teddy, look how many people. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I'll make a brand new start in peace. New York, New York.